Welcome back folks. So what we're going to do today is uh, check out the new replacement power supply for our beginner's toolkit. So these are the uh, specifications that came with the power supply. And most of this you can verify just by turning the thing on. Um, but uh, one particular specification uh, I'm concerned about here is the, the noise. Um, the power supply that produces a lot of noise is of no use to anyone. So this particular specification here that the ripple and noise is less than one millivolt RMS, uh, that's the one we're going to check out. And that's where the last one really failed us. So uh, let's proceed. Um, so we're going to run it through a, a few of its different levels. We'll just generally check out the feel and functionality of it. If you uh, saw the, the mailbag version, and I'll, I'll, I'll put a link to that up here. We took it apart then and we saw that indeed it was a, a, a fairly well built uh, linear power supply. It's not a switching power supply. So that right there means it's going to be inherently a lot less noisy. Um, and we also noticed that the, the internal voltage, the voltage coming out of the transformer going into the regulator board is about 27 volts. So when we got this thing um, loaded down, especially putting at a low voltage, there's a lot of dissipation across the pass transistor at the back. So I think we need to also check the temperature back there to see how things are going as we go through these tests here. Uh, I'm just a little bit concerned that at, you know, the way that transistor is mounted just to the back uh, of the case is not quite enough um, heat sinking for uh, long term high loads at low voltages coming out because you'll be dissipating the the difference uh, in that transistor at the back there but anyway that's how um, right now we, we can see that we have on the scope here we have a certain amount of noise let's amplify that a little bit so it's 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 nothing compared to what we were seeing with the other power supply but this is background noise so if, if we look here we have about uh 2.8 2.9 millivolts of background noise peak to peak that's about 560 um, microvolts uh, rms so we're going to keep an eye on that and subtract that away from anything that we see going forward uh, let's start off here by just going through some some voltages um without any load on it first and see if if that produces any appreciable noise so let's turn it on here well, the noise hasn't gone up at all. We're still at 560 microvolts of, of uh, RMS noise and uh, 2.88, 2.9 millivolts of, of background noise. So with that any load, it's not creating any noise at all. So let's, let's turn it up to about, um, about seven and a half volts, about halfway. And see what the noise uh, changes to. It looks like we've gone up on the peak to peak by roughly half a half a, a millivolt, well not half a mill, 0 0.05 millivolts. And uh, we're about the same on the RMS. So it's just a practically no increase in noise at all. And let's bring it right up to the rated output, the maximum. So 15.0 volts. We're still showing about three millivolts, 2.9 millivolts of peak to peak. And we're actually our, our <laughs> RMS noise seems to have gone down just a tad by about 10 microvolts so uh, that's that's pretty good so far so let's check the noise with a with a 50 percent load on it so it's rated at two amps so let's let's do a a one amp load on this thing all right we're pushing at one amp at 15 volts um and we're still still running about three millivolts peak to peak so that's basically it's added no noise um, there's a little bit of an increase on the RMS uh, roughly uh, 50 microvolts so let's try that down a little bit we'll, we'll reduce the voltage down to half we're still 2.9 millivolts peak to peak and about 600 microvolts so again it, it put about 50 um, microvolts of, of, of noise uh, by being run at about half its load. Let's bring it all the way down to the lowest voltage. Lowest voltage is 2.1. Let's get a new average. Yeah, basically we're, we're not seeing this power supply producing any noise whatsoever at half load. 
So that is, that's really good. So we're, we're um, right about eight millivolts, 800 microvolts. So we're really not too bad considering we're, we're running this thing pretty well flat out. Let's take, check the temperature at the back here. Oh yeah, she's getting toasty. You're getting toasty. And you barely keep your finger on the transistor right now. So let's quickly bring that down to two and a half volts. And we're about eight millivolts of noise. Now we've got everything all turned off again. I'm just going to check the ambient again, uh, just to make sure things haven't changed. But it, it looks like they have. So the ambient noise is now around about 7.8 millivolts and about 800 RMS, uh, 800 microvolts RMS. So, um, yeah, I don't know what came on in the lab, but something did. Anyway, right now, what I want to do, I want to set it up to check uh, for the, the turn on and turn off behavior to see if, it, if there's any overshoot or undershoot that might be uh, harmful for circuitry connected to it. All right, so I've got the scope set for um, DC input. Uh, I've got the voltage level set to 500 millivolts per, per division. We're going to check this out at two volts with a, a quarter amp or a half amp load. And um, we're going to turn it on. And we've got the the trigger set to one volt or about 50 percent yeah this spike here isn't that great so that's that's unwelcome let's set this up now to try it around about five volts so we'll set this to to one volts per division here we'll set the uh, trigger up around two and a half volts Set this down here. And put our voltage up. Five volts. Probably just triggered there, yeah, it did. Okay, so let's get ready to it. Here we go, we're gonna turn it on. So it looks like we got a little bit of that again over here, but this time it didn't go anywhere near the maximum on voltage, but it did go down. It uh, went down to minus one half a volt. So it drops down below one point, minus 1.2 volts for about 100 nanoseconds. So that's, uh, that's not great. It's not great. Let's center that here. And uh, well, let's, let's try it up at uh, 15 volts. Okay. So you see that that uh, very short dip going down. Yeah, it looks like it's a little bit less this time, but that's just because we the time base. It's a very short pulse. I don't think it would harm anything. Uh, but all in all, the turn on is is not that bad, except for that initial very, very short pulse. It's, it's uh, you know, about 100 uh, nanoseconds. I doubt that would cause any problem, but uh, I mean, it's not, it's, it's not that great to have it. So uh, let's see what it's like turning it off. Okay, let's have a look at that. Looks like there's a slight, uh, very slight ripple before it begins to drop, but then it drops nicely. Um, I will say though that uh, some of the things it does, like it, it's controls are very nice, like, uh, and it will go down. It'll go down all the way down to zero volts if you want. So you can get down to, you know, 0.1 volt, probably even a little bit less if you use a, a meter to test the output. And then all the way up to 14 or 15.2 volts. 
So we're going to use this 10 ohm 100 watt resistor here. And uh, right now, let's uh, let's bring the voltage up. Let's bring it up to 10 volts. Of course, we can't because we're in constant current mode here. So let's bring it up to 10 volts. Yeah, we use the fine control to get there. All right. So we're putting in uh, 1.08 amps. Let's uh, <coughs> let's bring that down a bit and let's say we only want to put in half an amp. So we'll bring that down to 0.5. And you can see it's you know with a with a truly resistive load, it's uh, it's quite well behaved. You can accurately uh, pick your constant current level. So we've got precisely half an amp going into it. 4.6 volts. So there's going to be some loss across the uh, the cables for sure. And uh, resistor is just barely getting warm here, but uh, so it's got fairly good control over the the um, the current as well, the constant current, which would be good for for charging batteries. So let's say you you had a a lead acid battery that you wanted to charge up, and I just happen to have one here. Just got this lead acid battery. Um, now its normal charge rate is at uh, half an amp for 10 hours. So what you would do, you would set this, put your um, set your current load here for for half an amp, right? As we had it, and uh, take your load off temporarily. Put your voltage up to where you want to charge to. So I think um, you're looking at about. 14 and a half volts for a lead acid battery. And then uh, you'd be very careful to put a diode in the circuit because you don't want that to feed back into your power supply. Well, connecting that diode, make sure that you connect uh, the anode to the positive of the power supply and then the cathode to the positive of the battery. That way the battery's voltage cannot make it back up into the power supply, but the power supply can charge the battery. That protects your power supply against any kind of damage. We have the power supply set up to limit current at about a half an amp, and uh, it'll charge it up to a maximum of 14.7 volts, which is uh, the proper charge voltage um, for a, a lead acid battery. And it'll hold this at that half amp until the the battery itself begins to draw less than half an amp and then normally you would just stop charging when it got down to about 50 milliamps or so or 0 0.05 on this keep your eye on that constant current there it actually could be a few minutes so why don't we come back to that in a couple of minutes here we're getting close to the voltage set of 14.7 uh, we're still putting in approximately a half an amp. And there we go. It'll stay at 14.7 volts, which is a good topping voltage for a lead acid battery such as this. And uh, the current will just continue to go down and down and down and down. And then, like I say, once you get down to about 0 0.05 on here, which would be 50 milliamps, you can consider the battery fully charged. All right, so that's it. I mean, there's the new power supply. It, it isn't perfect. I guess for the price, you can't expect it to be. But it is a linear power supply. It does have um, current uh, limiting capability and it has, compared to the other power supply, practically no noise at all. It does have that tiny little bit of uh, an overshoot and an undershoot when the power is turned on or off. But it really, it only lasts a matter of, uh, uh, you know, 75 nanoseconds. Um, for that, the total length of that pulse. Uh, so I don't think it caused any damage. Like I say, for a really, really fast circuit, like uh, some sort of microcontroller running at several hundred megahertz, it might cause a reset or something of that nature. A brief pulse of that nature is not going to damage anything. 
But uh, I mean, it, it is there though. And uh, that's what you expect for a sub $50 power supply. Anyway, thanks for joining us folks. Uh, this was a rather long video, uh, a little bit longer than I expected. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.